Hey, how's it going, B-Man? My name is Elias, or you can call me Devin, um, and I'll be doing your VOD review for you. First off, thank you so much for choosing me to do your VOD review. One of my favorite things to do. It allows me to, you know, digest all of the information and basically give you a blueprint to work with in the future. To tell you how I'm going to split up this session, uh, the first part, I'm going to be talking a lot about movement, gunfights, looking at your minimap, and overall your decision-making skills. Um... I'm hoping that you would under already understand that pretty much high ground wins the game, and uh, annoyingly, people who have high ground in prison uh, pretty much win uh, rebirth, right? Or at least they make it really far. Um, but after that, then we're gonna hop over to Verdansk, and since Verdansk is your first time playing it, I'm literally gonna break it down into fundamentals and say, all right, this is part A, part B, part C, boom, do that every game, you're done. Um, really really excited but i'm not sure uh where your goals lie i'm not sure if you want to be a professional player because i could literally give you so many notes on all right you need to open this door jump in hit a slide open the box and when you finish your slide turn around pick up the loot jump out the next door right i could literally digest it that much because that's how professionals you know think about the game and how they want to keep their momentum and their movement going but I don't want to focus on that. I just want to let you know that in the future, if you want to go in that in depth, we can. Um, other than that, let's just get started. I'll think. All right, lads, let's get it. Done. Right away, um, I love that you know your team obviously has one last player just staying back and looking to see where people land. You know, gets to call them out. Hey, 50 people in this area, 40 people in this area. Okay. Oh, your teammate just died. Okay. All right, cool. Perfect. So right away, um, great job popping that dead silence, getting to your teammate as fast as possible. Um, I see that you do not have a problem with going for trades and baiting your life and just overall trying to get kills and go for the win. So that's really good. Great use of dead silence. All right, so perfect. Okay, cool. So I want to let you know right now, um, in the professional you know, play, there's usually roles, quote unquote, and these roles are more for like, you know, kill races, 4v4s, 3v3s. And um, what you can do right here is basically you're being an anchor for your team right now. And since you're being an anchor for your team, you're holding down this entire building and you're treating it as base camp basically. So in any sketchy way, if your teammates are caught out in the open and they're getting pushed, they can back up to this building knowing that they're safe and they can just play on their way there. That's how they, you know, played up and they're ready for a fight right away is because they know that they have a home base. Um, one thing I will say though, you're playing a anchor role right now. What should you be doing as an anchor role? You should be at high ground, looking out of, out of the window, making sure your teammates aren't being pushed. What I'm seeing right now is this cluster strike, people should be running at you right now. People should be coming down this mountain, using this high ground, and cleaning up your teammates. What you need to do is make sure they can't get there. Um, so just try to get there a lot sooner. Just make sure your teammates aren't out in the open and they uh, die when they don't want to. Here's another issue on that whole base, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, the area your team is in right now is the worst place you can be. The reason why it's the worst place is because there's you know, literally buildings over here and high ground up here and pretty much all of this you know, clutter right here. And what this means is you can get shot from high ground up here, you can get shot from high ground up here, and if a team wanted to, they could sneak through this because it's going to be hard to see them and they can just come right around and kill you guys. So usually what you should have done is, oh, you need to get your loadout. Okay, teammates, come back to the building. Hold the building, teammates. I'm going to get my loadout. You guys protect me just how I protected you. We'll just see what happens. Ooh. If you were an anchor and you stayed inside there or one of your teammates were inside there, guess what that allows you guys? 
So if you already had a teammate in here, they're using their heartbeat, they're paying attention to audio, they're calling out, guys, there's people running up this hill, they're coming to me. What this allows your team to do, cool, boom, you're there. You guys get an immediate shot to get to that building 3v3. Instead, you're against the odds right now, and uh, it's not looking good. So right here, good. you have two windows, and you have a doorway. What you could literally do right now is stand right here, plate up, and go back and forth, throwing shoulders. If you don't know what a shoulder is, it's pretty much you're just sitting uh, on the edge, and then you peek, and then you go right back. That's all the shoulder is. Um, so you can literally shoulder back and forth, and you get to see where this team is pushing up and if they're pushing up. Really huge advantage. Um, not only that, but you actually hear the guy. So we'll continue forward. Oh, right there. So you, I don't know if you heard it, but you can actually hear glass breaking. And hearing that glass break should tell you that they're pushing, right? Um, and then right there, you start hearing the footsteps. And right here, you should know that uh, he's around this corner. Um, before you go around this corner, it looks like you have amped up because you won the gunfight. Just switch to your uh, bullfrog right here and go for the kill. Just go for it. Um, if you didn't, that's totally fine. See how your strafe was. Okay, cool. So, obviously you destroyed this dude. When you strafed left, he started missing shots on you, right? There, there's shots right here. If you go back in the video, you can see him missing shots right here. So that's perfect. You straight left, that's exactly what you should do. But the second he starts missing bullets, you need to go back the other way. You need to go to the right. Because now what this guy is doing is he was shooting you here, and then he traced back to you, and now he's aiming at you. But if you jump to the right, he's missing shots on you. So pretty much that's how you want to do every single strafe. One big thing that you want to use and utilize is your UAV. And in fact, you want to change your UAV in the settings, change this to square. Because look, if you had square UAV, you're seeing so much more information. So change this in your settings from circle UAV to square UAV. Um, that being said, you want to look at your UAV as much as possible. The professionals, they're looking at their UAV every three seconds. I'm not kidding you right now. The best way, um, I actually use this analogy, right? You want to treat your minimap in Call of Duty how you treat your car while driving on the freeway. And what I mean by this is you're driving on the freeway, right? And you're going 80 miles per hour, yet you're staying in your lane and you're not crashing into anybody around you. You're just staying in your lane. But every three seconds, you're looking at your left mirror, right mirror, top mirror. You're going to change the radio. You're going to look at your speed. And you're doing that comfortably. It's like a second nature. That's the exact same thing you want to do in Call of Duty. You want to be able to drive 80 miles per hour in Call of Duty, but confidently look at your minimap every few seconds. It gives you just way too much information. So, if you saw that your teammate was in a gunfight, you should start plating up and be running to him. So, by the time you're done plating up, you're already next to your teammate. Alright, so... Alright, that guy actually just came out of nowhere. Um, oh, okay. That was just really basic right. trades right there. Um, what it looked like is you just looked at your minimap, saw an enemy there, got the kill. The other guy was on ghost probably. And you guys just trade it out nicely. So, one quick thing. When you have that UAV up, you guys could pull up your big map. Just pull up your big map and just check the area. See what has a lot more... Um, what has a lot more action. So, if you guys pull up your big mini map and you split your map in half, you guys could say, all right, there's about 40 people on the right side and only 10 people on the left. So, then that, that way you could decide, oh, let's go to the right and try to get all these kills. Or you can say, let's go to the left and, you know, just try to get high ground control and, you know, play for a win. Or, sorry, if you guys want to go for that loadout and get ghosts so you don't die to UAVs. Um, this is perfect right here, by the way. Oh, well, almost perfect. I highly recommend whenever you're traveling, always have your second uh, secondary weapon out. So the bullfrog. Um, you're using Amped, the perk. Amped allows you to switch weapons like that. 
So you should always have your fastest weapon out so your movement is the best. And, you know, if you run around the corner and see a person there, switch over to your AR. Take that long gunfight. Or switch over to your sniper, you know? Um, I would just recommend, like, your, your, your sniping and your snapping to players in your first gunfight, it's not there. And I would recommend probably using Kovac's Aim Trainer um, or Aim Lab. The second guy is on the UAV. And this is one problem I see with a lot of players is they don't know when they can fool a player and when they need to keep him alive. Um, this scenario right here, unfortunately it's blurry, but I definitely can see three or two dots on the minimap. You guys land the first one right here, boom. You get that guy down, don't go for the fool. Because right now, if his teammate's inside the room, that teammate can easily peek out and kill both of you guys because you're both staring here. Just get this down, look up, and just either play for audio, look for the second guy, hunt the second guy with your teammate, which is what you do, which is good, or back up and just pay attention for audio. Just looking like, uh, you know, you got, I don't want to say nervous, but you kind of button mash right there. Melee. I want to let you know right now, the second, the second you get your uh, loadout, you should almost never be looking at the ground. Um, the only time you should be looking at the ground is if you can find a satchel and if you can find a um, gas mask. That's literally about it. And even when you kill a player, you will know if they have a satchel or a gas mask. So right now, there's no reason for you to ever look at a dead body. Let's see how you play this. Nice uh, counter peek or nice peek back, I mean. Ooh, nice, nice. Yes, 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 yes. You played that perfectly. Awesome. Great use of use of utility. You basically treated him like a gopher right here. What you did is you said, "All right, I'm gonna make sure I keep him trapped." You want to keep the uh, gopher trapped. So what did you do? You flooded out this hole um, with your thermite. And you force him to only peek this way. So that was perfect. Boom. Gopher is only stuck in one area. Now just win the gunfight. Perfect. Great job. Always think about that. That's a huge thing that you want to think about in Vern Dance. Is in Vern Dance, there's going to be teams camping in second stories and just a crap ton of buildings. That's how you want to start, you know, thinking about the game is I got a bunch of gophers inside of this building. I need to trap them all in one room so I can start throwing nades and stuns, fly up there, get the kill. Oh, man. So you were paying attention to audio right there and you predicted that guy. Unfortunately, the second guy came around the corner. Um, the best thing I could say right there is maybe in the audio you hear the second I'll find you. audio is a huge thing by the way um if you want to know the setting using boost high keeping your effects on 100 master volume on 100 and keeping your music volume less than 10. all right so if you remember like i said you should always have your secondary weapon out just because your movement is the fastest and then right here, you should look at your minimap, understand where your teammate is, understand how he's getting fold, pull out your sniper, and this is where you can peek. Peek with your sniper, boom, get a headshot, dead. And you backed out, that's good. Never be afraid to back out. That's another big note about Fern, uh, Burn Dance that you're going to learn is if you need to back out of a fight, just do it. There's 90 other people on the map, they're not going to die. Yeah, so um, with the gas moving in already and you guys heart beating and everything, you guys just want to try to get to the roof as fast as possible to give you guys as much as time as possible to just scout the area. So if you guys got up here maybe 30 seconds earlier after everyone was dead, you guys could just scout the area and see, all right, who's on what buildings, who's on low ground, where's the next high ground, how do I get to the next high ground, come together with a game plan. Right here, uh, you're kind of just making it where you have to go, 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 go. Yeah, so, dang, that really sucks. It looks like you guys are dead right here. Um, these guys, they they were just holding the circle and holding you guys back. You know, they're, they're in the advantage. They're in the final circle. That's usually how it goes. It's, if you're in the final circle inside of a building or in, have high ground, you're gonna have the best chance to win the game. 
um, right here. How to avoid this, though? You guys have gas masks. You guys could easily say, we can't take that fight. Hop into the gas, go all the way down to the far left, and end up there. Or you can get into the gas, go to the far right, and get to a different position. Right here, you're just out positioned, and you guys died, unfortunately. Again, you want to think about the idea, right? Your teammate in the purple is holding the anchor at this building, therefore it's safe zone. Your teammate just died in this building. What this tells me is this enemy could be inside uh, where your teammate died, or he could be in the building right in front of you. So once you get that kill, I would recommend either backing up to your teammate and reloading, or reloading on the outside and then hopping in. That's just perfect example right there of this guy pushed up, he now needs to plate up and reload. So he knows where his teammates are anchoring and where his teammates are safe. So he runs back towards his teammates, and now you're dead. The idea of being an anchor and making sure you're safe. The beginning game. And the fundamentals of Warzone is pretty simple. You have your beginning game, middle game, and end game. For your beginning game, your ultimate goal is just get your loadout. If you get your loadout, you're pretty much going to be a warrior on the map, and you're going to get a ton of kills. Um... And then that's where we get into the middle game, where once everyone gets a free loadout, which is when the first circle closes, that's when the middle game starts. And that's where you have to start playing smart and strategically and thinking about, all right, guys, we have to play offense, neutral defense, which we're going to talk about that later on uh, in the middle section of the game. Finally, we're going to be talking about the end game. And the end game is where it literally comes down to staring at your big map understanding where enemies are and just coming up with a game plan all right so beginning game one thing you want to start doing in almost every single building and every single miniature map what do i mean by a miniature map superstore you could literally count this as its own map same thing over here with um factory you can count it as its own map and what you want to do when you count it as its own map is you want to split it up into a square and realize how to clear it out I'll tell you right now, clearing out every single building is the most easiest when you're rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. The reason why is because you're never stuck in the middle and you're always making sure you have cover. And the best part, there's doorways and windows, so if you need to leave the area, you get to leave the area. Huge, huge, huge note right there. Just make sure you uh, always go around clockwise, counterclockwise, just to make sure you win those guys. So here's what I mean. Boom, you see that guy go to that area? You should know he's either going to peek back right here, or he's going to... You should know that he's either going to peek back right here, or he's going to peek right here. So two things you can do. Since you have an AR, you should aim right here, because if he peeks left, boom, snapped. If he peeks right, boom, snap. You get the kill and or you at least get damage down um so that's the first thing you can do but instead you decide to get close and uh you be aggressive so again you're predicting you should have held that pre-aim because he didn't come out to your left so he is 100 percent coming right here or he's flying around this corner there he is rose skin i actually didn't see him so that sucks but right here even though you know you're pretty much gonna die here this slide cancel, if you can just try to jump as far right and strafe right just to try to get damage down, that'd be the best thing you can do. You see him right here, you just jump and strafe right just to try to hit fire and land damage so your teammate can clean up the kill, hopefully. It works every time for me. I literally take out my fist, I'm this guy right here, I take out my fist, I run, I hop up on this car, and then I strafe all the way, I'm behind the tank, and then I just play the game that way. On the side you're currently on, this is what I do. I just literally mount this to see if anyone tries to push up right here. And if I don't see anyone, then I just pull out my fists, fly to the tank, and I just play the tank. Playing the tank is so powerful because it talks all about the idea of centering and being able to snap to a player. Making sure you treat your player like a goat. This is where I was talking about where you want to go back to that tank. You heard him inside the building. So if you go back to the tank, now you know you already have the gunfight to kill him there. Um, so this is what I was talking about on how this could have been so much more easier for you. Is the second you heard him inside this building, 
All you have to do is get on top of this tank. And all you have to do now is aim right in the middle of this building, and he's either going to come out to the right, or he's going to come out to the left. And all you have to do is aim and shoot. Um, Alright, so you no longer see the player up top, and you're starting to look down low. You see that guy shooting in the middle, this is where you want to look down at the glass and get that kill. If you pay attention to your minimap, you're going to get so many more kills, and you're going to be in so many more better positions. So again, I don't know if you watched the uh, the rebirth, but you want to be on square minimap, and with the square minimap, you want to look at your minimap as much as possible. You're looking for the red dots, whether on their they're on high ground, low ground. You're seeing where your teammates are and what area they have control of, what building they have anchored, so you know you can get to there safely. And you're also looking at the map to see how you can rotate around. So if you saw that there was red dot here, red dot here, and a red dot here, you would want to rotate around the building clockwise or counterclockwise. If you're this close, you would want to go counterclockwise just because you get to the first kill sooner, and then uh, you get to kill those guys. Um, and if those guys decide to try to kill you in front, you just flank around like that. That's the whole idea of uh, counterclockwise and clockwise. So again, your guys' still whole goal is to just try to get enough cash to get your loadout. Um, and you want to start doing that by picking up contracts. If you can't get a scavenger contract, 1000% pick up the bounties. You always want to pick up a bounty because it tells you where a teammate... Oh, where, sorry. You always want to pick up a bounty because it tells you where an enemy team is. And if that team dies, you still get cash. So you could just buy another bounty. Or you can get another bounty. Um, just make sure you get those contracts coming in. Bounty, bounty, bounty. It's good because technically right now your green player is playing as an anchor. Um, if Enemy he's UAV being your overhead. scout, he can also be your scout where he gets to the high ground, zones the area, and says, guys, you can cross to me, get back to me, and be safe. Um, spreading it out right here isn't too bad either. It's totally fine that you guys are uh, still playing spread right here. This is where you're officially getting into the middle game. And... When the first circle closes, that's when every single person gets a free loadout, and this is where you need to start thinking strategically about your gunfights. Um, you don't need to think too strategically. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. It literally is break down pretty simply. You have offense, neutral, defense. What I mean by this. So you're driving up in a vehicle, right, and you see enemies inside of this building. Cool. Cool. The second you see enemies inside that building, you should decide whether you want to leave it or go for those kills. Usually you'd probably want to go for the kills or else you're just going to have a boring game. So you would park your car inside of this building. The reason why is because you want home base, you know, a place where your anchor can play. And now you are officially in the neutral gameplay. You're, we're still in middle game, by the way. Right now, in the, gu the gunfight, you're in neutral territory. What this means is you have cover and the enemy has cover. Right now, the only thing you're trying to do is break the enemy's plates. By doing this, you're going to be inside this building peeking from different angles. Peeking from the first door, uh, from the first floor, first floor door, second story window, second story uh, other window over here, third story window, uh, first story left door. It, on the roof, you're literally challenging from so many different angles just to get the enemy's plates down. The reason why is because once they have plates down, it makes it easier for you guys to play offense. You want to be the team playing offense because of something called Peeker's Advantage. If you don't know what Peeker's Advantage is, it's really basic and simple. If there's a player right behind this pillar right now, and you jumped out to the right, you're going to see him first before he sees you. The reason why is because your uh, console right now is saying, okay, render this pillar. Oh, I'm about to jump around this uh, pillar. Whatever is there, it better be rendered. It better be rendered. Oh, there's a person rendered. Boom, you so, get the kill. Let's say neutral fighting is over and you guys decide to be on the offense. Being on the offense, usually you would have one player stay at home base just to watch the windows while the other two players push up toward the building. When you push up to the, toward the building, first few things you want to do, 
pull out your heartbeat to see if you can find any of those rats, those gophers, right? See where they are. If you don't know where they are because they have ghosts, that's totally fine. Next thing you want to do, try to get a person to the second story or, f or uh, roof. Almost all the buildings in Verdansk has hop-up spots, and you can parkour to get to the roof. Some of them are a lot harder than others. Some of them are very easy. And very simply, for uh, police over here, you can hop up on this quad, and if you get the perfect strafe and um, you have it pushed up onto the stairs, you can get up to the second story floor. You don't have to do that, though. That's just a little crazy in advance. All you have to do, though, is climb up the ladder. You're on the roof. So you have one player on the bottom floor, one player on the top roof. Now, you don't have anything on heartbeat, so the next thing you want to do is pay attention to audio so you can understand where those rats are going. What room are those rats in? And eventually, you guys are going to understand, all right, we have the rats in this room, and all you want to do now is throw your grenades, throw your stuns, and use Peeker's Advantage to go for the kill. That's how you play offense. Now, to play defense, defense, it's pretty much you just want to get to the high ground and you want to do two things. Very important. First thing, reposition. Every single time an enemy sees you or you down an enemy because they just rushed in, reposition to a different room. Reposition's just somewhere brand new. Leave the window. Go on the opposite side of the map. Do something because of the exact same thing I just told you about, being a rat. You don't wanna be a rat stuck in a room where they're just gonna nade you out. You wanna be able to kill them and boom, exit, go out to a different place, right? Um, I, guess the, I guess to make this um, metaphor better, you don't wanna be a gopher sitting inside of a room ready to be drowned. You wanna be a rat. You get one kill in one room or you shoot in one room, you go to the next, you go to the next. That's how you really want to play defense. Um, in the future, if we do have a session, we can go way more in depth and we can do it in person and uh, it will be better to tell you that. Um, right now, we're just doing bot. I'm actually curious. So I couldn't predict this mid-game, so I'm now bringing it up. But if you looked at your mini-map, um, and this is in the future if you VOD review on your own, you want to stare at your mini-map and just think about where the enemies are going. So right here, there's enemies in this vehicle, and there's a Bertha right here. Therefore, these enemies should be inside of this building, which is what you're predicting, which is perfect. One thing that they possibly did right there is they just hopped on top of the vehicle, jumped to get on top of this roof, and that's how you died to that guy. Enemy UAV, oh is they uh, just jumped on top of the roof and killed you right there. Maybe that's what happened, and you could... Actually, maybe that happened, maybe that didn't. I'm not sure. Pretty much, you just want to look at this map, see where you're landing, and understand where people are probably going to be. You're probably going to have a lot of tryhards over here in this area, but you're going to have a majority of the lobby at, like, Hospital, Promenade East, Downtown, Farmland, maybe Lumber. Lumber sometimes, sometimes not. I'm not fully sure. Um, and uh, a lot of, I guess you could say, maybe new players will be landing here, but not a lot. Um, so right away, you can just start eyeballing and understanding, okay, you know, there's probably going to be um, 20 people here, about 50 people here, and then 20 people here, and then that's where the rest of the stragglers go, right? Um, the rest of the stragglers usually probably either fl fly out to lumber, uh, and I'm talking, about, I'm, I'm talking about a full 60 people, by the way. We're missing 60 people on the map. And what I mean is these 60 people, you just want to count them for, you know, probably landing maybe, okay, these uh, maybe five over here, and then, you know, five go over here, five go over here, five of it. You just want to break it down to three parts. People here, rotate over here, da 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 da, -da. Um, Talking about the Gulag winners now. Just looking at this map right away, I know that the Gulag winners are going to be spawning over here. Um, maybe Gulag winners will be spawning up top, but up top they're a little, they're really far away from the circle. So Gulag winner, winners. Once you memorize this map, you're gonna start understanding uh, shortcuts a lot better. 
<laughs> boom, you get that down, you can exit right here to your left. Just slide cancel, get to your left, you're out. Just that little micro uh, change right there could... It, it's the difference between you being dead and not being dead. Um... Yeah, no, dang it. Oh, you played that perfectly. I, I feel like you just forgot that you're playing trios right there. Right here, not only that, but you hear the third teammate running to your right. For a fact, I heard him running to your right. All you have to do right here, boom, get the down, run away to the left. Do the exact same thing you just did. Circle around. You got, you got the first down, you circled around, you got the second down, circle around again. Get the third guy. Try to avoid going for fulls whenever you're this close. If you're this close, there's no reason for you to go for a full unless you need ammo. Therefore, you, sh you should start running throwing knives. You need to buy back two of your teammates. So right away, the first thing I would do is I would just go ahead and grab a Bertha, grab a supply run, and buy back my teammate. Once I buy back my teammate, I'll probably look for like a scavenger, do that scavenger, and uh, we'll get enough for a loadout and my teammate. Um, and then from there, you would just get a bounty and then go for a kill. Right away, you landing back in, it's just so much easier if you just look for a vehicle. And I'll tell you right now, helicopters are the best, and then it's cargo, and then it's SUV. Um, cargo trucks are more for like solo players. That's why I'm telling you, go for this uh, Bertha, because you are by yourself um so that's a game plan 20 meters 20 meters is very close it's it's a lot closer than you think this guy is now running up the stairs keep your shotgun out right here boom you get the kill if he was 50 meters away 100 percent okay to pull out the rpd 40 meters away eh, probably okay 30 meters definitely don't pull out the rpd Let, let's just say final circles looking like something like this right and what you're going to want to do is, with this final circle, you immediately want to look for a home base. Um, get to that home base, get to that building, make sure it's cleared out, and you're good. Next thing you want to do is pull up your big map, and you're looking for all the buildings, and you're looking for all the high grounds. And what I mean by high grounds is I mean, uh, you know, radio towers, mountains, simple stuff like that. And then buildings are obviously high ground. Once you start seeing those, start marking them. So, you know, there's a high ground building here, one high ground building there, two uh, train stations high ground, three, there's a mountain right here, four, and then there's a uh, fire station, or not a fire station, there's a few buildings over here, five. So right away, you know, you counted out five different places of high ground, assume that there's five teams there. You're going to have like maybe 18 teams left in the game right away. Boom. You just caught, uh, you just got five down. Now there's 13 left on, uh, in the game and you can just start, you know, guessing where those last teams are based off of gunshots. So what I mean by that is train station, very popular area. If you're hearing gunshots, you could start assuming, all right, maybe there's three teams over there.